Patch 9.1 is set to launch on June 29th, and you might be wondering what the hell is going on. And if you are the type who looks for the TLDR at the end of a post, this video is for you, because today we will be breaking down the most important class changes in the upcoming patch. We know that patch notes can be overwhelming, so we're here to help. We talked to some of our pro players, and they let us know what changes will likely affect PvP the most in Shadowlands Season 2. So make sure to stick around to see what classes you need to look out for in 9.1. But before we get into it, we have a quick question for you. What spec will you be playing next season? Huge patches are a great time to re-roll, and maybe you're thinking about switching it up. Let us know your plans for 9.1 in the comments below. And if you're looking for some guides to get a jump start in the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow. We will be updating all of our courses for 9.1, teaching you how to play exactly like the pros. Our guides break down everything you need to know about your class and have secret tips and tricks that only the best players know. Our website features commentaries directly from pro players that teach you everything you need to know about specific matchups, including inside information that you won't find anywhere else. We also offer a 30-day and 6-month money-back guarantee for those that use the site, meaning you got nothing to lose. So if you want to dominate the competition in Shadowlands Season 2 and beyond, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Over the past few weeks, we have been covering some of the weekly PTR updates, and if you're still out of the loop, the main thing you need to know is that 9.1 includes a massive overhaul to the PvP talent system. Pretty much every spec in the game has at least one or two new PvP talents which have either replaced other options or had their design reworked entirely. Frost Mages, for instance, will be getting a summonable ice wall that they can use to zone out enemy players. This will function like a huge pillar, but it can be destroyed by damage. This ability is just a taste of the complete overhaul of PvP talents in this patch, and the ones we're covering today are the most important. If you want a full breakdown of some of the other changes, be sure to subscribe because we will be covering changes for every class while giving our predictions of the Season 2 tier lists in just a few days. The spec to see the biggest shift in 9.1 is Mistweaver Monk. This, of course, is coming after a relatively weak performance at the start of the expansion, where monks repeatedly ranked as the lowest healer in our tier list. 9.1 introduces some new PvP talents, with Pace Weaver, Dematerialize, and Thunderous Focus T. We anticipate that Pace Weaver will provide a good option into Affliction Warlocks and Shadow Priests, while Dematerialize will help with survivability issues into comps like Rogue Mage. Some of their existing PvP talents also got a rework, with Counteract Magic, Refreshing Breeze, and Eminence all getting updates in the patch. Eminence is probably the most broken option here, as it will allow monks to use their port while stunned, potentially removing a win condition from certain setup base comps. The next massive change in 9.1 is a new PvP talent for Rhett Paladin called Judgments of the Pure. This will cause Judgment to dispel magic effects on nearby friendly players in Arena. This is by far one of the most controversial additions to the patch, since it means Rhett Paladins will be able to dispel CC on their partners just by doing their standard DPS rotation. On top of that, it seems like this dispel even works with Divine Toll, which auto-casts Judgment on its effect. And with a new legendary called Divine Resonance, which will continuously cast judgments after Divine Toll is used, Rhett Paladins will have multiple dispel options when they are using this talent. In our preliminary testing, it even appears that the dispel works through line of sight, and all of these things combined will make Rhett Paladin teams a massive issue for comps like Rogue Mage and Shatter Play, who rely heavily on CC-based setups with Polymorph. Moving on to an important item change, the bonus health granted by Gladiator's Emblem Trinkets has been reduced by 30%. Here we can see a comparison between a BM trinket this season and its 9.1 counterpart after the nerf. One thing that didn't change, however, is the amount of primary or tertiary stats, which still might make it the best trinket option in the next patch. Right now, BM trinkets are a default choice in Arena because they are essentially an entire defensive cooldown. While 30% reduction might seem like a lot on paper, it might not be enough to make other trinket options more appealing. A potential replacement for BM Trinkets will be the new Unchained Gladiator Shackles, which functions similar to the Maledic Trinkets from last expansion. Not only do they give primary stats, but they also have an on-use effect to absorb healing, which seems to be the focus of many changes in the patch. It's not clear at this point what Trinket will truly be best in competitive PvP, but these two options are definitely looking promising next season. Going back to some class changes for a bit, mages are getting some massive rebalancing to all of their specs. This, of course, comes after a season-long reign of Fire Mage as one of the best specs in the game and easily the best spec for mages. Kindling and Infernal Cascade are both getting substantial nerfs next patch. 
Both of these abilities together were some of the main reasons fire was so dominant, as kindling makes it harder to line up defensive CDs for combustion, and Infernal Cascade is one of many damage multipliers that makes it so scary. Frost Mages will be happy to know that their spec got some huge damage buffs next patch, with Frostbolt getting a massive damage buff in PvP. This will make Frost Mage sustain damage incredibly strong and will make them deadly in Caster Cleave since they have so many zoning tools to help their partners free cast. But these nerfs to fire and buffs to frost aren't the biggest change to mage next season for PvP, because taking that title is the removal of Kleptomania from both specs. Now the PvP talent will be arcane only, which will dramatically change how some matchups are played. This ability is a direct counter to Restoration Druids, and now with its removal from the best mage specs, Druids might become one of the most dominant healers in 9.1. On top of that, since Kleptomania was such a huge counterplay in Fire Mage Mirrors, expect to see much faster games in mage versus mage matchups now that combustion and other mage cooldowns can't be instantly dispelled by both teams. One class that might potentially see upward movement on our tier lists is Death Knight, as 9.1 will introduce some game-changing PvP talents for both Frost and Unholy. Both specs will be getting Strangulate as a baseline PvP talent, and this change alone will be huge for class rebalancing. Silence effects are pretty scarce in PvP, so having one on your team is an important asset, especially if we are to see more caster cleaves next season. The infamous Heartstop aura has been removed from the game, but taking its place is a new PvP talent for Frost called Bitter Chill, which will cause Chains of Ice to reduce the target's haste. Overall, this continues the trend of DKs being the anti-caster class, with multiple options to literally slow the game down. This comes on the back of a nerf to anti-magic zone, which was more of a PvE focused change and really won't have too much weight in Arena. Unholy also got some love with a new PvP talent called Necrotic Wounds. This will effectively give them a healing reduction effect with the additional bonus of being a self-heal. Once again, this comes with a slew of changes designed to make healing harder next patch, potentially reining in on the amount of hybrid healing currently in the game. All of these changes, however, will definitely increase the comp options for both DK specs next season. And if there is one spec in the game which didn't need any buffs, it was definitely Feral Druid, which is arguably the best melee DPS class in the game right now. 9.1 will be giving Feral Druids a healing reduction effect through the redesigned Wicked Claws PvP talent. It will cause Infectious Wounds to also apply a 10% healing reduction, stacking twice. Once again, Ferals are already in a really good spot in the current patch, but next season they could be absolutely busted. Having a healing reduction will dramatically increase their comp options, as right now they are fairly limited limited to Jungle Cleave is their best choice. The only thing really offsetting this buff is a nerf to the Well-Honed Instincts Conduit, which is a nerf to the class as a whole. This nerf will cause the auto-proc frenzied regeneration to happen less often in Arena, which is quite a significant nerf to Druids into setup-based comps like RMP, where a frenzied proc during a stun can often prevent kills. Demon Hunters are getting some substantial damage buffs next patch, despite already having really high damage in Arena. This is likely another PvE-focused rebalance, where Demon Hunters place on the lower end of the DPS spectrum in Mythic Raids. These damage buffs will help elevate Demon Hunters a bit, but don't really address the core issue of the class, which is their vulnerability to dying in stuns. Darkness was changed to be a baseline 50% damage reduction in PvP, but the Cover of Darkness talent was reworked accordingly to only provide an increase to its radius, rather than increased damage mitigation. As a whole, this seems like a nerf to DH survivability and team utility. And even though there were some major reworks to other PvP talents, it doesn't seem like the survivability issue is being addressed at all this patch. Demon Hunters will likely remain a class cannon melee spec, being incredibly disruptive, but at the cost of being really fragile. Their healing reduction effect was moved from Fell Rush to Blade Dance with the Mortal Dance PvP talent, which might help with the uptime of healing reduction. Holy Paladins are another spec that aren't getting their main problem addressed in 9.1. Right now, the biggest thing holding Paladins back in Arena is their mana regeneration, which is the worst in PvP compared to other healers. Healer mana regen is a 1000 MP5 baseline in PvP, with Holy Paladins having 30% less. 9.1 introduces a buff to Flash of Light and some damage nerfs across the board, which once again is a direct response to the strength of Holy Paladins in PvE, where their damage is incredibly high. Divine Favor Holy Light healing 
was nerfed slightly and Light's Grace was redesigned to increase Flash of Light healing. All of these changes together seem to favor more usage of Flash of Light in Arena, which is an incredibly mana inefficient heal. These changes might make Paladin mana even worse in Arena, and that is on top of all the healing reduction effects being added in the patch. Paladins have already suffered some significant nerfs in Season 1 after being the best healer early on into the expansion. Collectively, these changes will probably move them slightly lower on our tier list if mana remains an issue next season. One class that is getting its weaknesses addressed are Rogues, who will now have Dismantle as a PvP talent option for both Subtlety and Assassination. Right now, one of the biggest problems with Rogues is that they have very poor passive damage mitigation, which makes them incredibly susceptible to getting trained by melee cleaves in some matchups. Having a disarm effect will help alleviate some of these issues, while also giving them an extra peel for their team. Assassination is also getting a potentially broken PvP talent called Hematoxin, which will apply 40% healing reduction to targets with Shiv. Right now, Assassination is already on the cusp of being a broken spec in PvP, with some of the highest sustained damage possible in Arena. So so having an increased MS effect will definitely help their offenses tremendously. One change that somehow went under the radar is a cooldown reduction to Smoke Bomb, but only for Subtlety Rogues. Next patch, its cooldown will be 2 minutes, down from 3, which is a really huge buff on paper given the popularity of One Dance Rogue builds, which rely heavily on forcing cooldowns with Smoke Bomb. All of these buffs are offset by a few important nerfs, however, with one being a nerf to Mark of the Master Assassin in PvP. Its duration will be reduced by 40% in Arena, making it significantly less valuable than its current form. This legendary alone has dictated the playstyle of Rogues this expansion, and has promoted a reset-based playstyle in order to benefit from the legendary. The Cloaked in Shadows conduit also promoted a reset-based playstyle, which gives Rogues a shield during stealth. In 9.1, this conduit is severely nerfed, with the shield now only having a 4 second second duration. This will help prevent the endless reset strategies you often see in rogue mage matchups in 2v2. One class to see huge movement on our tier lists are Warlocks, with Affliction and Destruction both receiving some buffs. Affliction's instant cast damage has been increased a bit, but this comes on the back of a change to the infamous Corruption Slow Legendary. Instead of passively applying a slow with Corruption, it will now cause any curse effects to be extended by 2 seconds. What this means is that teams without a curse to spell might have infinitely refreshed Curse of Weakness, Tongues, or Exhaustion, which could wind up being really broken in some matchups. Destruction is also getting some key damage buffs, specifically to Chaos Bolt, which will be increased by 10% next patch. On top of that, the focused Chaos PvP talent has been removed, but instead Chaos Bolt damage will be 40% higher in PvP, which opens up new PvP talent options for the spec. Much like Affliction, Destruction is one of those specs that is right on the cusp of being absolutely broken. The changes to both of these specs might actually elevate Warlocks into higher tiers next season, especially when you consider buffs to some of their complementary classes, like Frost Mages, Feral Druids, and Assassination Rogues. Rounding out our most important class changes are some damage buffs to Survival Hunter with Raptor Strike, Kill Command, Mongoose Bite, and Flanking Strike, all getting 15% damage increases. Throughout the second half of the season, Survival really took a backseat behind BM as the primary spec in PvP. These damage increases, along with some new PvP talents, might help solidify Survival as the best Hunter spec, especially since they have Mending Bandage, which will be an enormous asset given the popularity of Rogues and Feral Druids. Some other new tools available to all Hunter specs include Tranquilizing Darts, which reduces buff durations by 4 seconds whenever Trank Shot and Counter Shot are used. This completely destroys Resto Druid Hots if both shots can be chained together on a target. Some updates not related to class design include item level scaling for gear in PvP. Every piece of gear obtainable from Conquest or Honor will have increased eye level in PvP. This doesn't really address any overarching gearing issues, but might help itemization conflicts for PvEers. Gear will still have multiple upgrade tiers, all with increasing honor requirements. Final item level upgrades will require over 12,000 honor, so get ready to farm BGs once you unlock duelist level gear. Upgrading has also been modified slightly, and now requires wins during the week rather than just needing raiding alone. Some new Covenant specific legendaries have been added to the game, and although we can't go through all of them in this video, the most important ones to be aware of are Divine Resonance and Elysian Might for Kyrian Ret Paladins and Arms Warriors. We covered Divine Resonance earlier in this video, and its primary appeal is its interaction with the new PvP talent called Judgments of the Pure, and will potentially allow Rep Paladins to continuously dispel CC from their partners after using Divine Toll. 
Although Kyrian isn't as popular for warriors, Elysian Might will be a massive buff to the Covenant, and might be the best legendary in comps like Thundercleave, where warriors need to have more zoning tools for their partners. The 4 second increase to Spear of Bastion will essentially be an 8 second CC against classes that aren't able to remove its effect. The Soulbind system is also being expanded, which includes more renown levels to grind. Super cool, right? Every Soulbind will have new rows and abilities, and some of them are looking pretty broken on paper. Survivor's Rally for Night Fey Warlocks is looking really promising, as is Waking Dreams for Mages, which is also a new Night Fey passive. Both of these are just more auto-proc defensive abilities that will make win conditions a bit more challenging. As for Venthyr players, Fatal Flaw is the new end cap ability for Nadia and grants 20% versatility or crit after Euphoria ends. This is a huge damage increase on top of the damage modifiers of abilities like Avatar and Beastal Wrath. Luckily, some auto proc conduit abilities will be getting some nerfs next season, as was mentioned by Halinka in his recent interview with Vinruki. Soulbind and conduit abilities will now be affected by dampening in arena and the brutal assault flag carrying debuff in battlegrounds. This is in a direct response to some of the existing conduit abilities like Ooze's frictionless coating and fleshcraft being absolutely broken in dampening and will help rein in on some classes being way too tanky in arena. There are, of course, way more changes in 9.1, and you might be wondering what the hell to do, but luckily, we got you covered, as we will be releasing a 9.1 preparation guide in the coming days. So be sure to stay subscribed, as we will be showing you exactly what to be doing, as well as give you our predictions on what the best specs will be next season. And that wraps up the most important PvP changes coming on Tuesday. Once again, be sure to subscribe because we will be releasing a 9.1 survival guide as well as updated tier lists for the Chains of Domination patch, and you won't want to miss out. And if you want to get ahead of the competition next season, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow, where we will be updating all of our class courses for 9.1. As always though, thanks for watching, hope to see you soon.